Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. Last night's final presidential debate before the Iowa caucuses took place, and the Democrats are down to 12 hopefuls, six of whom took the stage last night. Leading the charge, Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, and Pete Buttigieg, as well as Joe Biden. Let's take a look. This question about whether or not a woman can be president has been raised, and it's time for us to attack it head on. Um, and I think the best way to talk about who can win is by looking at people's winning record. So can a woman beat Donald Trump? Look at the men on this stage. Collectively, they have lost 10 elections. <laughs> the only people on this stage who have won every single election that they've been in are the women. Amy so and me. Break it down. Give it to us, Elizabeth. Political analyst and friend of the show, Mo Ivory. Oh. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Ooh. Wow. So, uh, just starting right there. Let's yeah. Oh, the, right the there. shade of yeah. yeah. her. Yeah. All of that so, shade. So, you know, she um, had to come out forceful. So everybody on that stage had to come out to separate themselves, right? We're in this position now where we've got to try to find a front runner. And everybody's mm -hmm. looking like, who's the person? Who's the person? And, you know, she was able to grab on to this um, feminine gender mm -hmm. conversation because of the battle that she's been having with, um, with Bernie Sanders this whole week. So she did a fabulous job doing that. And she put it down, and she said that. But, I mean, I think it's important to say, I don't think women in America have this conversation. Oh, mm -hmm. a woman can't be president. I think we know a woman can be president. Yeah. We've seen women candidates before. And so I think that alone won't be the thing that will get Elizabeth Warren over the top if, in fact, she can become the front runner. I love the moment, but I think it was only a moment. Yes. Ooh, wow. Well, you know, um, I got to agree with her. You know, had Donald Trump not cheated with Russia, then we probably would have had Hillary Clinton in office. So many things. You know, I was having a conversation before the show started about the nervousness of, you know, is, can Donald Trump really be beaten in an election? And we have to remember that um, Donald Trump won because we didn't show up. We didn't yes. go vote. Yes. And there was also interference. Now imagine if, and Hillary Clinton still won the popular vote. Yes, she now did. Now imagine exactly. if we showed up. How about right? that? How the about that? It wouldn't have been a narrow win. She would have won. One. So the key is not just to be obsessed with, oh, well, there's going to be interference mm -hmm. and, oh, nobody can beat Donald Trump. If we go to the polls, yep. if we show up all the women, yep. all Why the minorities, show up, yeah. um, I think we were not, um, we were not um, feeling Hillary in a way that we felt Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. And I think there had to be, you know how sort of every election has its feeling and its time period and a, a thing that's happening, it's sort of happening now because we're all like, we can't go any further with this man, mm -hmm. right? We're now mm -hmm. all sufficiently scared inside of our households yes. about our sons, about what could happen, about the state of our bodies and our daughters yep. and all of these things. So we're in another time frame where the issues are so crucial to us that we may have the activity. We need to have the activity. We yeah. have to have the activity yeah, of people going to vote and he can be beaten. That's true, but I, I still personally feel we need to uh, disband the Electoral College. That is my personal opinion. I think... Um, the popular vote should be the vote. Uh, but I'm going to leave that where it is. And, and there's, I, I a lot of, there's a lot of conversations about that. And, and unfortunately, that won't happen by this 2020 right, yeah. session. Right. So we have to do with what we have. We have the Iowa caucuses coming up on February 3rd. It's kind of like the first dance. You know, everybody's like, what are the Iowa caucuses? You know, basically, it's a, a bunch of um, uh, voters getting together, deciding who the front runner is. And then this, the country says, Okay, that's what they think there. Not particularly because Iowa is representative of, Amer right, of America, right, because right, it's right. not. It's no, but it's not. Just, it is not. But it has been chosen as the first place historically where we get a first impression of what's going to happen. Gonna and mm -hmm. that's why it was so important. Yeah. Now, Mo, speaking of front runner, who do you think is the front runner for the black, for the African American community? Because you know, a lot of people say it's Joe Biden, but you just never know. What, in your opinion? Uh, who who do you think is is really resonating with African Americans? Sure, I mean if you go by the pure data alone, we would have to say it's Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. um, Joe Biden has a remarkable amount of African American support based on his record being the vice president to Barack Obama, and he has been in the community for a very long time. Mm -hmm. You know, black people when they go to vote, historically older black people vote the most, yes. right? We have a hard time bringing mm -hmm. our millennials in yes. and our younger people. So if you look at that demographic alone, who is going to vote? It's going to be people who have a historic historical remembrance of yes. what has happened. Mm -hmm. And Joe Biden provides for African Americans a lot of things to say, I think I can trust him. But right. And that's why he has the numbers. Right, okay, we're gonna uh, take a break real quick and come right back with Mo Ivory with much, much more. Yes. Mo with more. <laughs> <I like laughs> more, 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 more.
We are back on Sister Circle Live with political analyst Mo Ivory. Yes. As a child. Well, listen, Mo, um, before we were going to um, the commercial, I just wanted to know, like, what would, let's say, a, um, a Joe Biden would have to do in order to get to the millennials, in order to really galvanize and pull them in? Sure. I mean, every candidate has a group that follows them, right? So African Americans are, are very heavy on Joe Biden. You know, women are uh, heavy on Elizabeth Warren. What he's going to have to do if he becomes the eventual nominee is he's going to have to choose a running mate that can do that. Mm -hmm. he, I don't think there's anything that Joe Biden can start changing about himself today mm -hmm. that's going to all of a sudden make my daughter, who's 21, go, yes, Joe Biden. You know, right. Right. it's going to have to be somebody they can identify with as a VP candidate. It's going to have to be a woman, and that woman better be black. I know because that's right. They, <laughs> if they <laughs> want to win and they want to take this all the way, there's only a Has couple of choices that they have to make. And I think we all know that that pr probably lands up in very few selections. Well, of course, in my, my mind, I, the name Stacey Abrams. Stacey Abrams. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Down. Yeah. Who do you yeah. think came out on top last night at the debate? I don't and what really, does that mean? I don't really think there was a clear there winner. Does no anybody feel winner. there was a clear no, winner? No. Um, I think everybody shined where they shine normally. And I think um, Buttigieg was great when he talked about foreign policy and Iran, but he served. So you would expect him to come out and be able to speak well in that area. The two women stuck to issues that we know that they're going to stick mm -hmm. to, which are about women and about health care. And Bernie did his regular health care rant. And so mm -hmm. I think everybody kind of did what they did. I want to say that Joe Biden did spark something at the end. Yeah. Um, he's not a great debater. Mm, no, he's, he's not, not a great debater. Not, I think we could just like, not let's accept it. that. Yeah. He's not a great debater and stop yes. going like, this is the moment Joe's going to shine. Yeah, you know? Joe's going to do what Joe does. Mo, uh, looking at the debate and everything that's going on, though, and you talk about all of us needing to come out, all of the black folk, what do we need to do to inspire that, though? Mm -hmm. What is the one thing that we need to do to get African Americans out to vote? I mean, election? we have to talk about it. We have to do this, right? We have to yeah. do civics. We have to teach people about what civics means. You talked about the Electoral College. People don't understand what that means, but yes. that's the base of every win is turnout, yeah. voter turnout. Yes. Yes. So black women, black men, the way we felt so passionate about voting for President Obama, we've got to find that again, yeah, right? We've got to stand in yeah, line absolutely. for four hours, eight hours, six hours, whatever it is, because this time it's about whether there's going to be a war. Yes. This time it's about whether your pockets are going to be drained and empty. Yes. It's about whether you can go to the hospital if there's going to be a hospital. Hmm. It's about being counted in the census. Yes. It's about all of these yeah. things that this man is doing. So let's talk civics at some point yes. because yeah. people need to understand we'll that I agree. and they'll be able to uh, know why it's so Let's important. Give it up yes. for Mo yes. I oh, I love it. Breaking it all down for us today. For more information on the 2020 election, you can follow her on social media at Mo Ivory. And of course, the conversation always continues at Sister Circle TV on all social media platforms. The amazing Mo Ivory, everybody. Yay.